And now Gavin Newsom is in South Carolina, the state where President Biden is kicking off the Democratic presidential primary and where Trump hopes to put an end to the Republican presidential primary. As we mentioned at the top of the show today, Alex sat down with Governor Newsom and, you know, he told her that despite polls showing a tight race, he is very optimistic about Democratic chances come November. Progressives, Republicans, independents, whoever, might be a little bit stunned that you have, what did you say, an incredible feeling of wellness? Is yeah, that right? Well-being. Well-being, sorry. Getting out there, getting on the campaign. This is, we've just started. Tag, we're it. Democrats. Isn't this great? We don't have to just watch this Trump show 24-7 in this primary where they're defining the terms of the debate and we're reacting to that every single day. We're now on the campaign trail. First primary, nation's first primary, February 3rd. Elections today, tomorrow, this weekend. It ends February 3rd, early voting. This is what it's about. This is what we're best at because we keep crushing it. Democrats, we keep crushing it. Look at all the elections you've won, Democrats. You keep winning. You keep outperforming. It's extraordinary. Pat yourselves on the back. Our message is working. Our values are American. They're universal values. Our policies, Republicans, begrudgingly celebrate and accept. I heard the governor here in his state of the state last night, and he talked about these new EV investments in, in his state. Really, Mr. Governor, that tried to oppose that and is sitting there with Trump? They can't even help themselves, but they're beneficiaries of all this because that's the character and decency of the Democratic Party, that we support people even if they didn't support us in the election. Alex and Governor Newsom also talked about the Republican primary race, Ron DeSantis' epic exit, and the failed efforts to take on Trump within his own party. Can we just talk about Ron DeSantis? Can I allow you a moment of schadenfreude? Just like the, the mic is yours. Does he have a political future anymore? I think he saved it by dropping out. Um, really? Yeah, I think he did. I mean, I think if he continued on, particularly if he continued in his own state, I think this is Haley's big consider it has to be. Uh, he was going to get trounced in his own state. I think he was down last time I checked. And when we did that debate, it was about 40 percent. DeSantis was down in his own home state yeah. of Florida against uh, Trump. Um, so I think from that perspective, I, I, just on a humanizing level, you know, having spent a tiny bit of time with him, but obviously studying him for some time, uh, he's a different guy now. I saw him with his kid on a video. I'm like, who's that guy? Yeah. Uh, he seems just he, he was so wound up, and I don't, this is not joyless. Me. Joyless, and you know, you can say what you want about Trump. He's, you know, he seems a little less uh, wound up. He, he's sort of winding up in terms of his rhetoric, and uh, but but a little more entertaining in that respect. But but you gotta be, you gotta know your why. And I never felt he had a why. Do you think it, the whole primary thing was an exercise in futility? Was it always going to be Donald yeah. Trump? Well, anyway, with Trump in the race, that you were going to try to somehow deconstruct and connect and attach yourself to Trumpism with Trump in the race and sort of take it from him but and, kind of and out really Trump Trump. I mean, it, the, the premise of it is it's, it's rather, I, I don't mean this as a cheap shot, but it, I, rather delusional as a, just a, a political analysis uh, and just factual, just based on the evidence. Uh, maybe you didn't think he was going to run. Maybe you thought he'd be convicted earlier for a, a crime. Or I don't know what they were uh, thinking, but it's so predictable. All this is predictable. Uh, and and I, with respect to Nikki Haley, uh, I don't know any state she can win, let alone her own state. Uh, now, I appreciate her state of mind that she's saying, all right, maybe, I assume. She says, all right, let's play this for the next few weeks, uh -huh. see if we can close the gap a little bit, see if I can continue to raise some money. And if we can close the gap, stay within single digits, maybe I'll risk losing in South Carolina, but then picking up some delegates along the way, stick uh, around the rim of the basket and see if the ball falls off around the convention. See but, if the rapture comes. See if the rapture comes. But I think in absence of that, if she's down 20, 30 points in a couple weeks, why, what, 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 what would be the political benefit of a former governor to lose her home state? Yeah, the humiliation and is pretty so I cute. Just don't, I don't think she's... I don't think she would do that. So my sense is she would drop out. But I see no signs being here the last couple of days that she has any chance whatsoever. All right, joining me now from South Carolina is Alex Wagner, the host of Alex Wagner Tonight. Also with us is Jan <laughs> Palmieri, former communications director for the Obama White House uh, and Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign. Alex, uh, I'll start with you. I mean, it's, it, it's quite remarkable because I can't think of another uh, politician in America who commands so much authority uh, as a political analyst as Governor 
uh, Newsom does. And he says it right there in that in that soundbite that we played. You know, Nikki Haley has no shot in her home state. If she wants to win, she needs Democrats and independents to show up for her uh, like they did in New Hampshire and even bigger numbers. That's highly unlikely right now. But give us the sense of how it feels on the ground there. Um, first off, let me say I've always wanted to be a guest on this show, so this is a real, um, <laughs> this is a gold star day for me. Um, but to to your question, Eamon, you know, in addition to interviewing uh, Governor Newsom, I spent some time with Jamie Harrison, uh, DNC chair, at a Get Out the Vote event at a barber shop in Orangeburg, South Carolina, because I, you know, just happened to have a few extra hours, <laughs> and it was really interesting. Right, We're, there are a lot of sort of Democratic strategists, people in the Acela corridor. We're talking about this this rapture strategy, right? Nikki Haley can stay in it if she's she's the only person with you know electors. She's the person that could actually you know step in if Trump is convicted or is somehow behind bars or taken out of the race. Nobody here is talking about that. Nikki Haley, the the only mention we heard of Nikki Haley at this Democratic event, and again, Nikki Haley would need Democrats and independents to turn out for her, which is something I think everybody understands mathematically. The only mention of her in this state, South Carolina, was the fact that she closed rural hospitals. Um, <laughs> Democrats understand, Democratic voters, it seems, understand that we are in the general election. And the contrast that is being drawn right now is between Trump and Biden. And the focus of the sort of remarks that I heard from Mr. Harrison today were, you know, let's remember 2020. Let's remember the sense of hopelessness, the, the feeling of your soul being crushed by COVID, but also just being disenfranchised in the political system. And let's remember what Joe Biden has done in the last four years, three years. Let's, let's look at the way your vote has helped change this country in a very short time. And I think that that's not just, a, of course, a reminder of the, the, the legacy of the Biden administration thus far, but a, a, a real desire to enfranchise the voters who are going to be key to Biden's success in all this and, and to encourage them to get off the sidelines, to make it as much about them as it is the incumbent president. I thought that was really interesting. Mm. But like the idea that somehow South Carolina voters are talking about the, you know, the, the <laughs> sort of chest of a Nikki Haley candidacy <laughs> lasting until the convention, as I saw it here, that wasn't happening. Yeah, so, uh, Jen, the question to you is based on what Alex was saying, what we heard from uh, Governor Newsom there. Do you see her uh, staying in this race until Super Tuesday, even if she loses South Carolina? Does she have any incentive whatsoever to stay in this race beyond, uh, beyond South Carolina? I mean, yeah, the governor identified the reason why you would do it, which is stay in until Super Tuesday with the thought that on Super Tuesday, a lot of these states are winner take all, but not all on Super Tuesday, so that she could accrue some delegates on that day. And then if the rapture comes or something happens, she is perhaps better positioned in the convention because she actually has delegates that she earned to try to win over other delegates. So it is, I mean, I suspect that, you know, having been in uh, presidential campaigns, most of the ones I worked on, wait, all? No, that's not true. Not all of them lost, but a lot of, most of them had to drop out at some point. <laughs> Barack Obama, he won. Bill Clinton, he won. Um, but most of them had to Don't drop out Don't sell yourself point. out like that, Jen. Right. Thanks. All right, well, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, I, but the point is I know about losing and having to decide when to drop out. And it's very hard to do. Coming out of New Hampshire, you're exhausted. I think that I think her team is probably pretty amped up and motivated and and happy now. You know, she did this. She she put out this uh, T-shirt because Trump had a Truth Social post that said, "If you give money to her, you'll be permanently barred from anything having to do with Trump ever again." Um, and so she put it on a T-shirt. She's selling the T-shirts you know, today mm. in South Carolina or last night in South Carolina. She was hot. I mean, she really went after him in a way we have not seen. And I think they might try to see, you know, where does, and, you know, that can feel great in the moment. And they have to, but then they have to, you know, the next two weeks look and see, okay, where are we really? And what makes sense? Losing in your home state is unattractive. It's also unattractive to get out before your home state and to get out before Super Tuesday. If you've come this far and you want to try to win some delegates on Super Tuesday so that you're positioned in case something happens and in the and then they pick a new convention, you know, the convention they pick a new nominee, which I guess was her and Ronda Sanders' strategy all along, because her yeah. and Ronda, you know, her her strategy was not, it doesn't appear to be, you know, ever take Trump on in real, you know, you know, all until this moment.